Hello, I'm Ronnie, and today I'm going to teach you how to use the Plantate app. So the Plantate app and the website can do all of the exact same things, but you might prefer to use the mobile version over the website. So today I'm going to show you just the basic steps of getting started with Plantate, how to import a recipe, add recipes onto your meal planner, and then create a shopping list for yourself. All right, so let's get started by importing recipes. You'll see here that I already have a few recipes imported into my account. When you start your plan to eat account, there won't be any recipes, but adding recipes is super easy. So you can see here at the bottom of my recipe book, there is an add recipe button. I can tap on that. I have the option to add a recipe by hand. I can clip a recipe from the web or I can import a recipe from the URL. So adding recipe by hand is just as simple as typing in um, the information for your recipe. You could copy and paste that information in there. Clipping a recipe from the web is going to be using our share extension recipe clipper, which I'll show you how to use here in just a second. And then the final import recipe from a URL is going to be if you need to copy and paste a URL into Planty in order to import that recipe. But you shouldn't really need to use that very often if you're using the share extension clipper. All right, so once you have the Plantee app downloaded on your device, the share extension clipper is automatically added to your share options. So let's head over to a recipe and I'll show you how that works. I've got this recipe here from Sip Insanity that looks really yummy and I wanna import it into my account. So I'm gonna use this share icon, which is the box that has an arrow exiting it. If you're on an Android device, this is gonna look slightly different and there will be a link in the description of this video so that you can learn a little bit more about where to find your share options. So I'm gonna click on that. Plan to eat then comes up in my share options here and I can tap on that. Now it is importing this recipe for me and the import was successful. So now this is a draft of my recipe. All of these fields in here are able to be edited. I can come in here and update any of this information if I need to. Otherwise I can just hit save. And now that recipe is here in my recently added section. Recipes will only stay in this recently added section for about an hour after you import them into your account. Um, they'll also just be sorted into whichever category that is in the recipe. So this one is in main courses. So if I scroll down here in my main courses, you'll see that it lives here as well. All right, now let's add some recipes to our meal planner so that we can create a meal plan. I'm gonna tap on the plan tab and you can see that I don't have anything here on my planner, but there's a list of dates and a plus sign over on the right hand side that I can tap when I wanna add either a recipe, an ingredient or a note to that specific day. So I will just tap on that. I'm gonna hit plan recipe and I'm going to add this recipe that I just added to my account to that dinner, hit next. It's gonna give me the option to select the meal time that I want that to be. I'm gonna have it be selected as dinner and now that recipe has been added to my meal plan. Like I said, you can also add notes and ingredients to your meal plan, and you can add them on the same day as this one. You can add it to the same meal time as this recipe is. You can add it to different days, obviously. But if you wanna add multiple things to one day, you can just simply hit that plus sign again, and it's gonna give you the option to add other things here. So I can add an ingredient, and I'm gonna plan these bananas as an ingredient for breakfast, and I'll add it there. And now you can see that I have something else here on my meal plan. So there's a difference between ingredients and notes. Ingredients are not only for your meal plan, but they will also be added to your shopping list so you can remember to buy that item. A note is simply a reminder for yourself, whether it's an event like soccer practice or eating at your in-laws house, it's just a note for you on your meal plan and it's not going to live on your shopping list at all. All right, so let's go over to the shopping list and we can see these items will be added there on the fourth. All right, so here on my shopping list, I need to update the date range that we are in because the current date range that we have does not include the day that I just planned a recipe on. So there's a pencil icon over here on the right hand side that I can tap on. It's gonna give me the options of today, this week, next seven days, next 14 days. You can also create a custom date range, which is what I'm going to do for this. So I'm going to tap on over to February and the day that I planned that recipe on was the fourth. So all I need to do is double tap on the fourth to make that the only day that is selected. If I wanted to select any days after the fourth, I could just then you know, tap more days on my uh, calendar here and it would add the ingredients for those recipes to my shopping list as well. So I'm gonna save that 
Here it is populating the items from that recipe. It is putting them into categories for me um, and they are in my store that's labeled favorite store. You can update your categories. You can update your stores all from this three dot menu over here in the upper right. You have the option to manage stores, manage categories. You also have other options for keeping your shopping list awake, which is great when you're in the grocery store and you wanna be able to keep your screen awake while you're shopping and tapping off items. We have the option to show our purchased items as we're tapping them off and also the option to consolidate purchased items, which means that as you're tapping off items on your shopping list, they're getting consolidated to the bottom of your list. So I'll show you what that looks like. So with all my items here that I have, if I'm in the grocery store, I could just be tapping things off as I'm adding them to my shopping cart. And then at the bottom, if I scroll down to the bottom here, you'll see that I also have these items crossed off at the bottom of the list, which is a really great way to double check your shopping list at the end of a shopping trip to just make sure that you got everything you needed. You also have the option to print your shopping list here from the app. If you would rather do that than take your app to the store with you and tap things off, that's found up here in this three dot menu. You can see it's the second item on the list here, print your shopping list. And that's it for the basics of using Plan to Eat. Um, Plan to Eat was designed for people who like to do traditional pen and paper meal planning and want to do it in a digital format. And we hope that both our app and website help you do that. If you have any questions, you can email us at help at plantite.com and we would be happy to help you. There are also going to be help articles linked in the description of this episode with more information. Thanks for watching.